50 years. There's all sorts of disciplines now that fall under that mountain bike umbrella. So we thought it'd be a good time to explain all the different types of bikes and what their intended use is. So let's start with cross-country bikes. This is the Canyon XC, the cross-country race bike. This is where weight is really important. So this is a carbon fibre frame. These bikes are often 29ers because they've got that extra rollover. So once you're up to speed, they'll carry speed really well. Like I say, weight is really important. So it's all about it being as light as possible because fitness and speed is really important. The tyres are fairly lightweight, so they're really fast rolling. They don't offer great puncture resistance, but more importantly, they're really fast tyres. The bikes have relatively steep head angles, so they're agile at low speeds, also good for climbing. You've got that long stem and low handlebars to keep weight on that front wheel, so you're not wheeling too much when you're climbing. This is a full suspension cross-country bike, something that people would race on marathon races, probably longer distance than the pure thoroughbred cross-country bike. Uh, the full suspension is a more comfortable ride. You're going to get slightly more grip on the rear tyre as the tyre tracks the fall a little bit better. Obviously, the payoff is slightly more weight. They tend to have single or double chain rings, probably more likely to have a double than the pure cross-country bike because you're going to be riding this bike for longer. Again, the idea is a light, fast bike still. So moving up the scale a little bit now, what I would call sort of a, a general trail bike they tend to be anything from 120 to 140 mil travel, which this bike is. With a trail bike, they tend to be overbuilt. You can see it's a lot chunkier here around the head tube and also here around the, the pivots to take that punishment. Also, compared to a cross-country race bike, it has a longer wheelbase and therefore more stable at speed, able to ride a descent more comfortably, but yet again, it won't climb quite as well. Most trail bikes tend to come with a dropper post. Really cool feature also. Moving up the scale again slightly, this is 160 mil travel. This is the area that a lot of bike manufacturers are trying to throw their resources at finding that one do-it-all bike. So you've got a really good downhill bike that also climbs. Again, the bikes are to be designed really aggressively. So to help with that, we've got bigger, chunkier tyres, more puncture resistant, but the payoff again is they're heavier. Slope style bike. The main fact about these is the companies are still developing bikes around 26 inch wheels. So kind of old technology as far as trail bikes and downhill bikes, but these guys are still riding 26. There's no need for the bigger wheels. I guess it makes the bike more maneuverable in the air having the smaller wheels. Short amount of travel, probably only 100 mil, just to take the shock out of those massive jumps when they land in heavy. As you can see, they have a low standover height, small frame, which means that it's easy to move around the bike to do all the tricks that they do. Really low seat, just getting it down and out of the way. A fat bike. Originally, these bikes were designed for riding on sand like we are today and on snow, the huge tyres give you that floating ability. These tyres are 4.8 inches wide, compare that to your average mountain bike tyre, maybe 2.2, 2.4, so they're twice the width. We don't even need a bike stand for it to stand up on the beach today. The bikes are designed solely around these wheels, really. They're so wide at the front and the back end, so the fork is wide to fit in that larger hub and that huge tyre. More often than not, these bikes are hard tails or in fact fully rigid like this bike and they're becoming more and more popular. You see these out on the trails and away from the snow and the sand. Downhill bike, definitely a very limited use as far as what you can do on this bike. Purely designed to go over the roughest terrain, top to bottom, down a hill. As you can see, extremely overbuilt all the way from the front forks which are a triple clamped very similar to a motorcycle very large aggressive tires super strong often tubeless 200 mils of travel front and back is usually about the ballpark 
a very slack head angle so you feel comfortable going down steeper descents. Really long wheelbase so, you, so the bike is super stable at high speeds. Also wide handlebars up to sort of 800 mils all help give the bike that extra stability. Usually found in 26 inch wheel like this one here or more recently manufacturers are making them in 27.5 inch wheel. A hard tail. They come in all different shapes and sizes. 26, 27 and a half and 29 inch wheels, steel, alloy, carbon frames. Obviously no rear suspension and they do often have a suspension fork. They're quite often the cheapest mountain bikes and as such, the most accessible way to get into the sport. More often than not, people ride a hardtail as their first bike and they're still really good fun. I want to say the humble hardtail, but there's still a place for these bikes. So there you go. That's it for our what mountain bike for what discipline. And we actually got the idea for this video from the comments in one of our Dirt Shed shows. So don't forget to leave your comments down below. We do read them all. And I should imagine you want to watch more videos here on GMBN. So if you click up here, you'll see my video on Suspension Explained. And if you click down there, uh, you can see our fat bikes fun. Are they fun? They are fun. Uh, give us a thumbs up like if you've enjoyed the video. Thumb up like. And click on us and the hardtail to subscribe to GMBM. Mountain biking has evolved a lot over history, about 40 years. There's all sorts of disciplines now that fall under that mountain bike umbrella. So we thought it'd be a good time to explain all the different types of bikes and what their intended use is. So let's start with cross-country bikes. This is the Canyon XC, the cross-country race bike. This is where weight is really important. So this is carbon fibre frame. These bikes are often 29ers because they've got that extra rollover. So once you're